Meet Ron Cruzy, studio director for Privateer Press. It's his job to make sure that Privateer has the best looking miniatures in the world. In this video, Ron is going to share with you the painting techniques of the professionals so that you can have amazing looking miniatures as well. Playing hobby games and painting game miniatures go hand in hand. A few things are more inspiring to gamers than a tabletop covered with strikingly painted miniatures. In this video, I will demonstrate how to assemble and paint miniatures from start to finish. I will discuss tools of the trade, how to avoid some common problems, and four fundamental painting techniques that will get you started putting solid paint jobs on your models. The most textured areas on the ironclad are the sections that will look like metal. Start by dry brushing these with metallic paint over the black base coat. Put a little pig iron on the dry brush. Wipe off most of the paint onto a paper towel. And then start dry brushing the areas you want to cover. For this model, we're going to apply multiple coats because we want the metal to show up well. Notice how some pig iron is getting on other parts of the miniature. This is not a problem, since it can be cleaned up later. This is why it's wise to do messy dry brushing first. Just keep dry brushing until you're satisfied with how it looks. Using the same brush, add some highlights using Quicksilver. There's no need to wash the brush, because you're still dry brushing the same areas with metallic colors. With a little silver on the brush, paint the outermost edges, because that's where you want the highlights. Brush a bit lighter this time, so you don't cover the first coat of pig iron completely. The metal is now finished. It has shadow and highlights. Next, we'll paint the gold areas. Start with a base coat of umbral umber because brown looks good as a shadow for gold. Using a base brush, thin some paint and then cover each area with a nice even base coat of brown. Once it's done, let it dry and then go back to dry brushing. This time, paint over the umbral umber with Rulet Gold. Use as many coats as necessary to get a nice golden glow, but be careful not to let the paint get too thick. Be mindful not to get gold onto the metal areas you have already painted. Perfect. Now it needs a highlight. Let's use some solid gold. Keep it light and on the very top of the edges. This is all the dry brushing we're going to do on this miniature. Now that the messy part is over, look for spots on the figure where metal and gold paint appears where you don't want it. You can clean up these areas using Thamar black paint, since it matches the primer and covers up most colors quickly and easily. Carefully paint over any areas that have paint where you don't want it. Use a base hobby brush for more control of the paint. It's a good idea to clean up any overbrushing as you go, because it makes the areas you have already painted look better for a good boost of satisfaction, and it also gives you a better idea of how the model truly looks. By looking closely at the model, it appears that some of the gold rivets are overrun with paint, and some of the dry brushing has gotten inside the recess lines, ruining some of the shadow effect. This can be fixed easily by carefully painting black onto the rivets to recapture the shadow and help visually separate the rivets from the metal plates. When that's done, you can recapture the rivets by adding a little highlight that will make them pop. Using solid gold and a fine brush, just bead the paint on top of the rivets. Don't thin your paint when painting rivets or it might run into the recesses. Use the natural thickness of the paint to your advantage. When you're finished, you can see how there is only a little ring of black showing and a little highlight on top. It really makes the rivets stand out.
A wash is a mix of paint, mixing medium, and water. They are generously applied to selected areas of a base coated miniature where the wash flows into the recesses of the mini to create a shadow effect. To make a basic wash, grab your mixing tray and fill a chamber with water. In another chamber, add a few drops of mixing medium, a brushful of paint, and three brushfuls of water. Mix it all up and then apply to the figure. Unlike base coating and dry brushing, you're not really painting it on. Instead, allow the wash to flow out of the brush and into the recesses. You can see how the wash collects into the recesses and creates a shadow effect that gives the figure more depth and dimension. One of the keys to keep in mind with washes is that they stain the overall area. So when you plan on washing, make sure that the base coat is a little lighter in color than what you want the finished color to look like. Washes offer many options, so experiment with them. By changing the amount of water you add, you can vary the intensity of the shadows. Straight water washes do not dry as evenly as those mixed with mixing medium. Notice the paint rings and the overall unevenness of the color. If you don't add enough water, the effect might still look good, but you run the risk of completely clogging up the details of the mini, which will make further detail painting challenging. Try washing over washes. Here is a white base-coated Ferrelgeist with a light green wash and then another darker wash over it. Notice how the wash is only painted into the darker recesses. There is no need to wash the entire miniature again. Often on figures like this rake and other miniatures that have organic parts, you must fill the gap so there is no break in the flow of the sculpt. As you can see, some of these areas need to be filled and smoothed over. To fill gaps, we will use Formula P3 modeling putty, which is a two-part epoxy putty. Notice how one half is lighter in color than the other. The lighter one is the resin, and the darker is the hardener. You'll need to mix the two parts together to activate the curing process and make the putty harden. Generally, you just take an equal part of each color, knead them together until you get a solid gray color. Very simple. Just cut and mix. You can also use different ratios of black and white to make a softer or harder workable putty to achieve some different effects. By adding extra white to the mix, you get a more solid and rigid putty that is good for sculpting hard edges, like on machines and weapons. With more black in the mix, you get a softer, more flexible putty. This is good for organic shapes, like the rake. Once you mix, you'll have about an hour of working time before the putty gets too hard to manipulate. To fill a gap, make sure that your working surface is clean of any metal filings, and then, Roll the putty into a sausage shape. With your sculpting tool, cut the end off the sausage and roll this piece out into a smaller sausage. Take your small roll of putty and start to work it into the gap. Use your tool to create a smooth transition between the parts. Try the best you can to mimic the shape and texture of the miniature. Putty work takes time and practice, but don't stress. You'll get the hang of it quickly. After you're done doing the putty work, put the miniature down and let it cure for about four hours before moving on to the next step. Make sure to wash your hands thoroughly after handling modeling putty. <laughs>